Greetings, YouTube. Yesterday, I finished my latest book. Alan Alda's Things I Overheard While Talking to Myself. It was interesting. His style is very similar to how he talks. So if you like Alan Alda, the way he, uh, particularly if he, the work he did on Scientific America, you could hear him speak it when you're reading the book. That was kind of nice. I enjoy when I could hear an author's voice literally in my head. Um, each chapter deals with a different speech that he gave, how he arrived at the speech's structure, the content of, of, the, of the speech, why he chose it for particular events, and how these things related to his past, and his family, and his friends, and um, potentially you know, the future. I came to this book completely cold. I found it at a yard sale, a rummage sale. I paid a dollar for it. I just saw it had his name on the cover. And I hadn't read his first book, so I'm thinking for a dollar I invest myself into this and see if it's any good, and I can decide if I want to read his other, his other book. So I opened it up. I never even looked at the back cover. So when the first chapter was about his giving a commencement speech at his daughter's college, I'm like, cool. That's neat. And I just got read just how wordy this guy is. The commencement speech, he, which he puts in there in its entirety, was six pages long. I don't know if I've ever sat through a commencement speech that long, even if it was spoken by a really nice guy with a nice voice. I think I'd be bored out of my mind. But then I get to the next chapter, and it's the same thing. And that's when I figure out that, you know, this whole book is about what he's talking about during his speeches. And some of the speeches he gives were to groups of people that, in many ways, were completely out here outside of his life experience. Um, he spoke to, po to, to, to Nobel uh, Prize winners, he spoke to doctors, he spoke to, to engineers, and these are people's the groups that were just outside of his experience, and he took them the, 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 the job, the offer to do the speech, particularly because he knew it was outside his realm of experience, that he enjoyed the concept of accepting the speech, being terrified by the fact that he did not have any clue what he was going to say at this speech in front of these people who come from a completely different walk of life and who quite possibly are smarter than he is. But he took it anyway. And he took one in his, one of the speeches he gave was about Thomas Jefferson in front of historians who specialize in Thomas Jefferson. So he reads a bunch of Thomas Jefferson books and he's like not only does it occur to him that these people have read these? There's a very good possibility they are the people that wrote them. So he starts asking everyone he knows what they know about Thomas Jefferson, hoping for a new insight. And eventually he finds himself in China for another project, and he starts asking people in China who, if they've heard of Thomas Jefferson. And for the most part, none of these people have any clue what he's talking about. But he finally finds a man who helped develop a new strain of rice. And this particular strain of rice has helped feed millions of people in Asia, not just China, but all over the world. And he realizes that this man is a living testament to what Thomas Jefferson was, an innovator, an inventor, a, a man of, of action. Uh, and he finds that link and then uses that link, this story of this Chinese man, when he gives the speech back in America to the, to the historical group at Thomas Jefferson's residence. I found that really interesting. I have to tell you, I have to say though that chapter after chapter of this particular model, it got a little dry after a while. I think this would be a better book that, since each chapter is completely and utterly separate from all the other chapters, there's a very slight chronological order as they move, as they move through his life. But I think this would be a, a good book to read in segments. Read it two chapters, put the book down, come back to it a month later, and read two more chapters. Don't try to do it what I did, which is cover to cover over a course of a week and a half or so. Um, but if you like Alan Alda, I recommend this book. And I'm probably going to see if I can find a copy of his first book, which is called um, Never Have Your Dog Stuffed, which is good advice even if I don't ever read the book. So. Go read some Alan Alda. It's good.